Hello everyone, this is Mike with CNC Mogul. I'm going to be documenting my personal build that I'm going to be doing uh, various projects in the future with. Uh, this is a picture of the two new aluminum extrusions on the bottom. Very rigid. This is the entire kit. What's going to have to be assembled to give you a, a mechanical complete system. Uh, I started off with figuring out that I'm going to use uh, some kitchen base cabinets from Home Depot. Uh, as the base of my table and eventually I'm going to have a vacuum table on the top. Here I, these are unfinished oak cabinets. I put them back to back and I realized that there was a little bit of a gap so I just clamped them, screwed them. Um, I previously built a vacuum table. It's off of the Donic videos. Uh, it has one by fours going around the edges and separations in the middle. Eventually I'm going to have a vacuum system inside of the cabinet to hold work pieces down um, and for different uses. So here I have all the parts laid out on the top of the table. Um, I'm going to begin the build and hopefully describe some of the details and, and answer a lot of questions everybody may have. There's 35 V-wheels, so I'm going to start with that with the assembly of each. First thing I'm going to do is push one bearing in one side of the Delrin wheel. After that I'm going to insert a washer on top of that and then uh, put a bolt through the two. Very simple. All the bolts are the exact same size. No confusion. Um, just repeat the steps. After I put the washer and the bolt on, then I put that last bearing on top and one more washer on top of that. I started doing them one at a time and realized it was a lot easier just to do one step for all 35 V-wheels uh, until they were all built. Um, I also decided I was going to use a medium thread locker. It's a blue. Red is permanent. Blue is just uh, a medium. I can get it off without any heating or, or stripping out any bolts. I'm going to begin um, assembling all the V-wheels on various different parts. This first part here is a carriage top cart. There's three carts, a top cart, a middle cart, and a bottom cart. Um, they all look different, so it's going to be pretty easy for the orientation. The top cart gets four V-wheels, making sure that they all spin freely. I tighten those four V-wheels on the top cart and move on to the middle cart. The middle cart is a little more complex, has eight V-wheels offset. doesn't matter if the which offset wheels hit the top rail or the bottom rail. Um, that will be explained a little better once I start assembling the carriage. Uh, last cart obviously is the bottom cart, just four V-wheels, very easy. Notice that this is not a, a perfectly symmetrical piece. There is a top and a bottom. Um, I lay down the table to show you how, how much closer the, the two end bolts or V-wheels are closer to the platform. So I have everything laid out. I'm going to begin with a uh, gantry end plate. Both end plates are the same. Um, you just can't bolt the V-wheels on the same side of each plate, uh, otherwise it won't go together correctly. So I bolted all six V-wheels on the end plate and um, snugged them up. Then I slid my Z-axis in it. Uh, everything is, is kind of tight, better tight than loose, so I, I slided my Z-axis in, loosened up the V-wheels, and just stung them up again. It helped it uh, be a little smoother. Uh, there will be a break-in period, no big deal. Um, these V-wheels should last uh, hopefully years to come. Uh, so I did both end plates and began working on the carriage. Uh, carriage front plate has an outlet on it. I went ahead and inserted the outlet into the carriage front plate and then with the seven V-wheels. Always applying thread locker to all areas where the V-wheels are going to bolt onto the aluminum plates. And I repeated the process with the Z-axis, uh, sliding the Z-axis in, loosening the bolts, and then retightening them. Just kind of self-fit everything. Um, not sure everything's hard mounted right here, so but it, it did make a world of difference. I also inserted the rubber grommet into the back carriage plate, the one with the big square in it. Um, and then that was pretty much it for the V-wheels. All 35 V-wheels assembled. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin putting the end plates on the carriage. This is very critical. Uh, if you don't do it correctly, you're going to be backing up to do it to do it right to make it go together. Uh, there's two carriage or two gantry um, 
beams that go across there. 40 by 40 millimeter. One has gear rack, one doesn't. The one with gear rack is obviously on the top and with the gear rack facing uh, towards the back of the plate. Um, I tried to take several pictures so that there's no confusion. Uh, I didn't tighten any of these bolts. I just inserted the bolts and got the rails um, fitted. Once everything, uh, the gantry rails on the end plates, I can go ahead and insert my carts. I started with the middle cart. You, ha you have to slide the top gantry rail up to be able to squeeze this in. Uh, they are slotted, so it's not too difficult. Go ahead and, and put the middle carriage with the, the notch out of the back middle towards the back. That's where your little spur gear is going to go. Um, just like the picture, get that in there, get it rolling smooth. Uh, no adjustment quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and put the top cart on. Notice the orientation and the shape of the top cart and which way it goes. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and actually put the bottom cart onto the front carriage uh, just so that it's easier to get that front plate bolted on. There's a lot of bolts that hold it on. Very rigid. Um, I went ahead and did all that and then, and then bolted the face on. All the bolts kind of finger tight and then went ahead to the back carriage plate. Once I have this done, you can go ahead and, and slide it back and forth and kind of fit everything. Now remember the top gantry bar is slotted so you just kind of roll it back and forth, put a little pressure on it, start tightening the outside bolts that bolt the end plate on. Once I got everything adjusted, everything rolling smooth, um, started tightening everything up slowly but surely got all the bolts tight uh, the next couple pictures are just to show the different orientation make sure that carriage front plate and back plate see that front carriage has a hole and the back one has a square make sure they line up um, the motor has to go through there uh, here's a picture of the back of the gantry making sure that the notch is where the teeth are everything's looking right um, now we're going to move on to the cable carrier rod. It's a support rod going across. You're going to have four quarter 20 nuts that are, are basically going to bolt it and create a little bit of tension between the, the two plates. I inserted the two inner nuts and flex the rod a little bit to, to insert it through the hole in the end plates. Once I did that, I began tightening the, the nuts uh, using one as kind of a lock nut and one creating a little bit of tension. I did all four nuts and finally I'm going to move on to the leg brackets. It's going to start looking like a machine here. The leg brackets uh, have a T-slot fit. Now if you pay attention to the way that I'm sliding them in, uh, with the longer bottom part of the leg bracket facing the V on the rail. Um, if you follow the pictures, it should be pretty simple. Um, Make sure you don't force them. Don't create a burr where they all of a sudden get stuck. Just kind of wiggle them. They'll slide in and then tighten all your set screws. I laid them out so I can get even orientation or uh, distance between all the leg brackets. With a four foot machine, you're gonna receive uh, eight leg brackets and um, I'm gonna prepare to mount it to the table. Uh, after I Got all the leg brackets tightened. I slid the, the gantry on those, uh, each rail, and uh, found my position on the table and began drilling where I was gonna insert some, some nuts. I do not recommend using uh, a V-type head bolt or screw as it's gonna pull the leg a little bit off from where you're really wanting to put it. So I used uh, just a it was a sheet metal screw, but it, it didn't have a self tapper on it and it had a, a hex head, which I like uh, a lot more difficult to strip something like that out. I drilled through the aluminum leg brackets. They have a, a V groove on all the leg brackets, so it's really easy. It took about three or I did one hole on the front bracket, brought the gantry up to align it. Uh, as I drilled it, as soon as I hit the wood, I stopped. I let the wood screw uh, create my hole. So I did the front leg bracket, and then I slid the gantry back, you know, measuring, going back and forth, sliding the gantry, getting the gantry to self-align where those side rails are going to go. 
Um, once I got one bolt on each of the leg brackets, I began um, finishing up some more, some more uh, wood screws and got my entire system mounted to the table. Uh, that was pretty much it for the build. I'm going to leave the top guard off uh, until I get the electronics in there. I do have some plugs for the end of the, the rails, including the Z-axis. I put those in what as well. Um, also included is four spur gears, so if you've got your motors or your motors are coming, these spur gears have to be press fit onto your motor shafts. The good thing about that is they're not going to come loose. Um, if you don't have the right tools, it might be tricky. You might have to bring it to an automotive shop. I use an Arbor Press. Uh, you can also fit a 12 point uh, 13 millimeter socket on it, kind of tap it on. I use a little bit of thread locker as uh, a thread locker or a, a, a locker for the spur gear, but also as a little bit of lubricant to slide on. It is an extremely tight fit. Uh, you definitely don't want to bend your motor shaft or anything trying to do it. Take your time. If you don't think you can do it, find some with an arbor press that'll press right on. Um, so this pretty much concludes the the my build. Um, I'm gonna have another video in the next uh, 24, 48 hours, hopefully, uh, bolting some electronics on and some different options. Thank you for watching and uh, feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thank you.